Your dreams aren't big enough. If they don't scare you, if they don't keep you up at night, if they don't motivate you when you don't feel like it, they don't get you out of bed, they're not big enough. Fact. Your dreams should be so so big, so astronomical, so large that it should just scare you into action. Fact. You should be wanting to chase after it every single day. That's fact. Fact. All right, peace. Welcome back, everybody, to the Facts Podcast. That is faith, action, culture, truth, and solidarity. I'm Cedric Scott Jr. I'm Jamonte Banks. Glad to have you back, Jamonte. As always, bro, it's good to see you. I see you. I see you sporting something a little new there. What you oh got yeah, there? man. You know, a little something I'm working on, man. It's a movement, man. I believe, like, with all the stuff that's going on in the world, man, we, we kind of lose sight of the love that's still there. So I'm just all about just spreading love, doing it courageously, doing it vulnerably, right. doing it boldly. You know what I'm saying? So stay tuned for more merchandise and more things coming with uh, Courageously Vulnerable, man. Stay tuned. Courageously Vulnerable. That's dope. Like, it's like a – you know, it's funny, like, our brands um, kind of, like, play off of the whole, like, oxymoron factor. Like I, I got ancient baby, you got love courageously, um, or courageously vulnerable. And um it's just like it's it's an interesting kind of dynamic, I think, when you think about things on, on a spectrum. Cause I'm looking at it like, you know, with ancient baby, it's like, you know, the old soul type of thing and all that different stuff or whatever. But um, you know, on your end, it's like playing off that, I guess, kind of that that cyclical um generational myth that really goes into a lot of, you know, for us as black men talking about how, you know, true strength is, is holding everything in. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? So, you know, and, and definitely I know you working, you know, in, in the world of, you know, mental health and, and counseling and things like that is, uh, you know, it's, it's really empowering. So I, I really appreciate it. Um, keep it up, man. The hoodie looks good. I'm about to get one of them. So, man, I appreciate it, man. Like, it's a lot going on in the mental health world, man. We People are lo- leaving this world um, by their own hands, you know what I'm saying, and own devices because we're holding things in. So we got to get into a space where we're able to do that comfortably, boldly, and, and unapologetically, man. So thank you for that, for sure. Oh, yeah, keep grinding, man. Keep pushing it. Just, we need it, right? Um, so, yeah, man. Uh, so just... Other than, uh, you know, the, the dope hoodie, man, tell us tell us more about, you know, just what you've been doing, what you've been up to. Oh, uh, man. So, uh, you know, right now, um, on top of, like, working on the merchandise and what have you, I also have been um, really, really focused on this bodybuilding venture uh, currently. Um, oh. and, and, you know, working alongside my coach. Uh, shout out to Mayo Flex Fitness, uh, Mayo Flex and uh, Anwar out there back home in Maryland. Um, he's been keeping me going, keeping me focused, my meals with my uh, workout protocols and everything else. So um, definitely been focusing on that, man. Looking at some shows to do next summer, um, mm-hmm. hopefully. So that's one of my biggest focuses right now. Also, as, as you can imagine, the holiday season is upon us. So uh, starting to strategize and get things to organize so my daughter can come out here and spend time with us for the holidays. And you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, just, you know, working staying true to my passion and what I believe in and just trying to stay at peace, man, with everything that I do. So um, that's a little bit of what's going on right now. And of course, facts, man, that's what we're working on, man. This podcast, doing this daily. No doubt, man. Uh, yeah, and we were just, you know, talking about how crazy it is at this point, you know, going to be releasing these, uh, you know, weekly and, you know, getting the content out, the, out to the people. And that's really been, I think, you know, what we've seen consistently between the two of us is just really focusing in and, you know, staying on our square about, you know, getting the content out, um, you know, getting things, you know, completed and and out into the world to people and into their hands. And, um, you know, much love you on your, on your bodybuilding journey, man. You know, we're going to be there with you the entire way. Um, regardless of, you know, whatever happens, man, uh, you definitely got my support, you know, Andrea's support and and the baby. So we love you, man. What are the Scots? For sure. Um, love you too, dog. Yeah. And, And this is all kind of, um, I think, plays into, you know, what I was thinking about um, in terms of what we wanted to talk about for today. Um, You know, I I saw, well, actually, I I think I took this notion originally um, from another podcast that I heard. Um, It was the the Secret to Success podcast. And uh, they were talking about um, basically how people will kind of like join in once they see things in motion, right? And you talked about, you know, your, your brand basically being a movement, um, you know, before. And the idea uh, is that 
basically people want to be like we can make a sports analogy right uh with the bandwagon fans right <laughs> people that are just like oh I'm, I'm jumping on board because i see them going to the top that whole idea but um to to even you know make it a little bit more real world like i was thinking about how you know in terms of a car like if your car breaks down and you're just kind of on the side of the road you know people are going to be more likely to actually help you if you start pushing yeah but yeah you, you know if you broke down and you just kind of sitting there people would just like ride past like oh man that's that sucks. <laughs> but if you're out there and they people see you grinding um and actually behind that car pushing it trying to trying to make something happen um you know more times than not you know you'll be you know a lot more likely to have somebody actually jump out and say let me let me support you let me i see you i see you trying right yeah. um so think uh thinking about that you know that whole analogy like and getting things moving like for you in your life and you know in, in your business in relationships whatever like what i guess what has you been your experience with that and uh what would you say to that point um for me man i think like i think back to like I guess it's my upbringing, man. I guess like, it always goes back to that, but somehow I just always end up going back to it. But when it comes to like just um, me being able to reach certain levels in my life, it was always because like I, I had initiated it, right? And I, and I started and I was putting in the work, the sweat equity behind something. And then people, for whatever reason, whether it was relational, whether it was because they loved me, whether it was just a stranger who just saw me doing things, you know, they came alongside and helped out. And so for a more specific example, um, I could think about like um, going to school, right? So my so my grandmother, um, an undergrad, my grandmother, there was a time where like the school messed up. They gave me like two refund checks and they weren't supposed to. And you know me, I'm living life like it's golden. So I'm balling. I'm <laughs> and so, um, you know, I had at the end of that fall semester, um, the registrar's office emailed me and was like, hey, your accounts are the negative, you, you're, you know, you can't register for the spring classes. And this was my sophomore year. And it was like, you owe this amount of money. Um, and it was in that moment where I was like, I ain't got that money. It's gone now. You know, I didn't spend it, you know, because I was being ill, I was being reckless or whatever. But because, you know, my grandmother them saw me working so hard in school and she wanted me to finish, you know, she said, I called her. She said, don't worry about it. Like, she called her people, her people called her people, we called the churches, talked to everyone and everyone else. And then like the money was able to end up getting raised so that I would can be able to continue to go to school and, and actually finish my undergraduate and move on to, you know, for further educational pursuits. And it's because, like you said, I was putting in the work. I was one of my first fam first siblings, the older sibling, to go to college, mm -hmm. um, to do those type of things. And so, you know, my family, my grandmother specifically, wanted to really back me up and help me actualize that thing that she has saw in me a long time ago um and that's just one of many stories of how you know family um has definitely been there uh, to help me and then of course like my friends man my like just i can go on and on about all of it but i think at the end of the day the reason why this topic is so dear to me is because there's so much truth to it it's, it's, it's proof in the pudding like you know there are very seldom times where you are working tirelessly to do something and no one either one recognizes it and two sees you going through those things and not wanting to be a willing help or aid mm -hmm. to help you along the way. Right. Um, and so I think it's just it's it's a it's a tired it's a it's a timeless thing, it's tried and true. Um, mm -hmm. but when you are working hard towards something, people will definitely will come to your aid and the world will conspire to help you. Yeah, facts. I definitely believe that. Um and well, I guess on the on the flip side of that too, what I would say, and you know, I gotta I gotta bring in the devil's advocate part of that. Um, what would you say though, in terms of, you know, do you believe that everybody who comes to your aid at that point, right? Do um, you think it's all genuine, or do you feel like some people might have a different agenda? Like, you don't have to speak to a direct experience, but I mean, I, I'm you know, I'm I'm always thinking about it in that in that that context because. You know, it's like being the quote unquote one who made it out or, you know, anything like that. Right. Where it's like people see you making the moves. Right. Or maybe they, they didn't recognize or they didn't appreciate it. You know, when you first started, like a lot with, um, you know, you, you read anything about entrepreneurship and it's always like, oh, when I started this, nobody believed it. Like, mm -hmm. nobody thought mm -hmm. they could do it. 
Um, and now everybody's like, oh, remember me? Like, but, you know, I guess, how do you tell who is there, you know, for your greater good or your benefit and who's there for their own? Man, um, that's tough. Uh, it's hard to kind of really decipher um, at times. I think sometimes you go with your gut. Sometimes your gut tells you, kind of gives you an inkling of like, you know, hey, like I haven't heard from this person. Like I, we maybe weren't even always on good terms and all of nowhere, they all of a sudden want to help me on this endeavor or what have you. And your eyebrow kind of raised like, hmm, let me, you know, or, you know, I think in my case, you know, like my grandmother, uh, you know, she's always been selfless. You know, she's always been someone who wants support and help and, and things of that nature, not wanting anything in return. Um, and so it's just one of those things where you really got to go with your gut and kind of be skeptical about it and also be honest about it. Like anything, as an entrepreneur, we know that everything comes with a risk, right? Like everything's come with a risk. Like, and, and if you are getting the help of someone or if you are coming alongside, or well, someone's coming alongside you to help you further your things, you got to always think about it. Like when it comes to business, it's all about them, you know, the expenses and assets. It's all about what you're making and what you ain't making and what have you and the growth and the dollar sign. And so if someone is helping you and, you know, to get your business to where it goes and then it, it does become successful, you got to expect at some point or another that there's going to be some, uh, some, some dividends paid back or asked of because of the work that they've been able to help contribute to make it actualized. Right. Um, you know, and so I think it's just one of those things where you just kind of just got to roll with it. Either you, you take the risk of getting that, well, you take the support or the benefit of getting that help and then understand that it may come down the road or you say, no, I'm good. I got it. And you, you go and bear it on your own. And that way you ain't got to worry about nobody else trying to come for you. Um, but it's really a decision that you got to make. For sure. Facts. I mean, I'm thinking about it. Um, you use the term sweat equity, right? Like where, you know, if you want to, if you want to take it back to, to hip hop culture, you know, the whole aspect of, uh, you wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Right. Oh. Um, <laughs> so just think about that. And, and with the, I guess for me, as I think about my own question to you, um, you know, I look at it from the lens of, you know, who was always there. Right. Mm -hmm. And basically I, I think to when I, you know, when I had nothing <laughs> and I was down on my last, like, who was, who was there? Because there's always going to be somebody, right? We don't ever, you know, get anywhere. Like, there's a lot of people who use the phrase self-made, um, you know, and it, it just gets thrown around a lot. It and, sounds good. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's, I mean it's, 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 it sounds wonderful. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, you just, you know, you just sprung up from the mud, like, you know, and, and for many people, like, you know, to an, to an extent, you know, you definitely get it out the mud, for sure. Um, however, you know, there's always been some contribution. Uh, and I think, you know, we do other, other people a disservice by not highlighting that sometimes. Um, but just thinking about uh, the, the idea of, you know, somebody being what you shoot in the gym, I, I always think about, like, like, as of right now, for sure, like, my wife. Um, is, you know, number one, like top of the list um, support factor, because even when, you know, situations arise where somebody might reach out and, you know, you know, we, I don't know if we got to, we got to be mindful of how, of how we mitigate this conversation right now. But, uh, you know, people come like, oh man, I need this. Can you hook me up. And then, you know, I, for her, and you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, as well, with, um, you know, with women, it's like, with them being natural multipliers and, you know, just being great with a lot of detail oriented pieces, like my wife is the best supervisor I ever had. So, mm -hmm. you know, with that, she would look at it and be like, hold up, you know, mm -hmm. let me, let me ask you, you know, and she's, she's not afraid to ask the, 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 uh, the difficult question uh, as to, you know, what, what is really, um, you know, maybe this person or, you know, this entity's, um, you know, what is their name? Like, what's mm -hmm. your goal? Like, what are you really trying to, you know, um, pull out of this situation? You know, and, and you, we also, we often think about that a lot in terms of like our, our just our own family, right? Um, funny thing, just maybe two or three days ago, I was talking to my father on the phone and he was like, I'm, I want to, I want to invest. And I'm like, in, in what? And he was like, in you. I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, I want to invest in what you're doing. I'm like, what, like my business? And he was like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I just started this, right? So like, 
I hope you ain't trying to see no return right now because, you know, things are just getting off the ground or whatever, and I'm just pushing. But, um, you know, ultimately he was just, you know, it was a good conversation, though, because it opened up, you know, um, you know, breaking kind of those those generational cycles of, mm-hmm. you know, not really thinking about another stream of income. Um, you know, we were talking about, you know, where he could put his money and, and, and see, like, you know, over, you know, a, a certain period of time, actually see some growth. Some growth, um, yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, and that, that, was a, that was a solid thing, but it was just, you know, it was an interesting uh, conversation to have, especially, you know, in reference to business. Because, you know, my father, he's, he's definitely one of those, you know, Brian, keep working, you know, take your money and, and, and do, you know, what we usually do with it. You know, mm-hmm. your, your family's good, you buy your food, you pay your bills and, you know, all those things. But in terms of, you know, putting it in a, in a place, you know, and I'm thinking about him, um, you know, for him, it's like, if, if you can't see it, are you going to be okay, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you give me your money to invest it. I'm going to put it probably in somewhere that deals with technology where you're going to have to use the app. And, and I'm like, Dad, you don't even <laughs> I yeah. mean, I don't even think you have an email address. So uh <laughs> so I'll I'm not, i don't want to scare you, but you know, it's just it's a you know, I guess the uh the thought of the unknown a lot of times. Um but you know, I say all that to say, you know, with him jumping in and saying that, that's based on kind of what we're talking about right now, like right, the, mm-hmm. the car is being pushed. So it's like, oh man, let me let me go in, you know, and and the beautiful thing is that I've always been lucky to have my father in my life. Um, and he's always been a great support. So, you know, I know that he means well, but you know, there could be other people who could come along and, and it wouldn't be the same thing, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. um, I guess talk to, um, you know, your experiences a little bit more just in, in regards to, um, you know, people who have, you know, saw you pushing a long time the road and, and, and joined in, like, you know, who do you have in your corner that, that falls into that category? Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of echo that, man. My wife, man, uh, she has always been, like, the sounding board, the, the the consistent piece. Like, she knows me. She talked to me about it today. We were trying to figure out what we're going to have for Thanksgiving dinner because we're going to cook here. And I was all over the place because, like I said, I'm bodybuilding right now, so I got to be careful of, like, how I'm eating, what I'm eating, and all that kind of stuff. So at first, I was like, I want cornbread stuff, and I want this, I want that, I want that. And then I was like, no, nah, I don't want no dinner. I'm not going to eat nothing. I'm going to be just da 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 And so she's like, you're always all over the place. Like, you don't you, – focus focus um and so i would definitely say my wife has been like that person that kind of keeps me grounded reminds me of what the the, what the intentions are and um kind of keeps me focused on that because i do feel like at times i may have gone undiagnosed with like adhd in a good way i feel like i'm all over the place man i'm all like my hands are everywhere my interest is everywhere uh my thoughts are everywhere and i think like kind of going back to what you said about um you know, your wife being that number one support. Um, there was a, a interview that I was listening to of Brand, Brandon Curry's uh, perform. Well, he's the current Mr. Olympia for bodybuilding right now, and he was talking about like all the because he became this Mr. Olympia and won this prestigious title. Everybody wants to come like sponsor him and do these things and all that kind of stuff. And the dude that was in the room was like, you know, how do you know people are doing out of good intentions? Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, my wife is in my corner, and I think he said like his brother or his trainer is in his corner, and so like he has people in this corner that kind of keeps him grounded. So for me, it's kind of the same way. Like, you know, my, my wife is always there to keep me grounded. My grandmother has always been supportive um, and kind of just keep me here. Like, I think she's been one of my biggest support systems and biggest cheerleaders um, in my entire life um, because of just all she's been able to do to kind of help me, sacrifice for me and doing it in a way that I don't feel like it's ever with the, another intention in mind. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to when I was doing Herbalife, man, I was doing Herbalife back in the day, like she was, she was my biggest client. She was buying all the shakes. She was doing all her teas. She was losing the weight. She was doing her before and after pictures and all that. So like, you know, my grandmother, my wife, um, you know, definitely hold me down, help, help me down. I continue to hold me down. And of course, my entire family, but more specifically, those two have been the ones that really, really, really um, keep me going. And, and in terms of like, um, outside of that, man, like, that's been about it. Yeah, I feel you. Facts. Um, and yeah, and I, for me, it's, I, you know, I also think about something that you, you kind of mentioned there too with, with, um, with your wife, Nisha, where it's basically like, it's, it's great to also have that person pushing alongside you, um, but it's even better. And you, you may not realize it in the moment, right? Because you, you, you're kind of mad. 
right? <laughs> like, man, I, I, you know, but yeah, right, exactly. But for, for whatever reason, for what it's worth, you know, you have those people who aren't, you know, quote unquote, yes people, right? Um, and I think I know personally, I need that um, in terms of just trying to get better, um, mm -hmm. you know, every day where it's, you know, and I, you know, of course, my wife, Andrea, is, is definitely this person where it's like, I'm gonna help you, but I'm still, I'm gonna tell you about yourself too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You shouldn't have ran out of gas or, you know, what were you thinking? You know, whenever, you know, regardless, um, you know, of, of what, what the issue is, it's kind of like, you know, I got your back, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to try to help you get better and I'm going to try to help, you know, make sure that this never happens again. Um, so it's, it's, it's good to have that, I guess if you want to call it contrarian uh, type of uh, type of uh, backing, you know, I think that that to me is, is the, the greatest um, overall game. And that's why, you know, I, I definitely give her like all, you know, all the praise and everything um, in terms of, you know, my, my own growth. Right. And then me recognizing yeah, yeah. that because, you know, so often, you know, for us, we can just really get, get kind of trapped within ourselves. And, yeah. you know, you want help, but you, you also, you know, you might not necessarily want to get, you know, everything that comes along with it, right? I just, yeah. I just want you to push. I don't want you to tell me. You know I mean? <laughs> tell me about myself as long as you push. Yeah, no, no, no. But, you know, nine times out of 10, those are the things that are going to help you, you know, continue to grow and, you know, and continue that movement. And then, you know, when, you know, that thing happens again, or, you know, the situation arises, you'll make a better decision or a better choice or, you know, whatever, you know, what have you. But um, I guess for you, do you, have you ever found yourself being that person for somebody else? Though? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've, I've, I've had this thing where I've, always kind of been like the Mr. Fix it. So I'm always looking to help somebody. If you're moving, if you want to move, if you're sitting still, I just found like, I don't know, that's all, it's just something that I guess I'm, I finally have gotten to a place where I realized that that's not always the most helpful way to um, be there for someone, but that has always kind of been my makeup. Mm -hmm. So naturally I'm a person who wants to jump in and help push the car. Um, it was actually a, 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 a real life experience where I was leaving the gym one day and I saw this older gentleman, senior citizen, um, going up the ramp into Walmart, but his car like stalled on him. So he was rolling down, right? And he was all the way in his like 60s or 70s, older cat. So I, I immediately pulled over, um, went to go help him. And because it was such a steep ramp, I couldn't do it by myself. <laughs> so, but because I was pushing, because I was pushing, one of the Walmart associates came, another guy who was driving past got out of his car and helped. And we were able to get that gentleman's car up the ramp and parked to the side. Um, like I said, that's just more of a tangible real life example of, you know, seeing someone working it hard and kind of pouring into them. Um, but like my um, little sister, you know, my little sister, she's, like I said, in this space where she's trying to figure out what she wants to do upon graduating from high school. And she's always just taking heed to, you know, I see how hard she's working right now. She's working. She's in school. She's a junior. She's trying to figure out what she wants to do. And so, um, you know, she asked me for questions about what HBCUs and how to do this and what, how do you know how do I get a free tuition and scholarships and da 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 military and so I see her grinding and I you know and I want to help so because I see her working so hard and pushing her own car I'm right there with her pushing it too you know whether it comes from just having conversations when things get hard and she's uncertain whether it's giving her books to read and kind of challenging her thinking whether it's pushing back on what she's saying or being an advocate with what, against what other people are saying for uh, about her I'm always there kind of pushing her in that same way so um, I've definitely you know, been someone who if I see you working and I see you not only working, but like, will also take the help, mm -hmm. then I'm going to do it tenfold. It would be no question that I'm right there with you because that's kind of how I always do my makeup. So yeah, I've definitely been there for a lot of people in my life. Right. And I mean, I think a, a, a big part of that too, though, um, that I feel like people might miss is that, you know, the, the expectation of either giving the help or receiving the help is going to be the same across the board, right? For everybody. Like, for example, with like with you with your sister, right? Um, you know, you can only give her tips in reference to what you know, right? Or what yeah. you read or what you understand. And I think, you know, it, it gets difficult sometimes whenever we, we try to 
offer assistance in an area that we are not well versed in, right? Like, you know, if I've never driven a car, like, I can't teach you how to drive. It just, yeah. it's, it's impossible. It's, you know, it just doesn't make any sense because, you know, a lot of times we might have like the um, more of the theoretical uh, knowledge or, you know, or information, but the practical, practical. Yeah. is, you know, really important. It's really, you know, I mean, it's, we talk about uh, a lot of times I see funny like memes and stuff like that, more so leaning toward, um, you know, in education uh, and then going into the workforce. They say like, oh, you know, the, this job is hiring, but, you know, they require, you know, at the entry level, a degree, four years experience, and, you know, <laughs> and you got the college grads that, and they're like, how do I get the experience? I, I just got out. Like, <laughs> just, you know, it's the same idea um, where it's just, you know, how do you get that information? How do you gather that experience? Um, especially in, you know, in scenarios where it's, it's not necessarily a part of, let's say, you know, the, the culture or, um, you know, maybe it was something that was never seen really in the family. Um, yeah. So you like with the, the things that you require, right, the knowledge and everything that you're able to now kind of assist other people with, right, and pass on. Because, you know, we, we think about the idea of, you know, pushing this car as, as physical. Um, but we, we, we're talking about a lot of different, um, you know, metaphorical situations that, that don't require your don't body. Don't require the physical, yeah. So I guess what would you say in that regard, you know, in terms of what did it take for you to, to be able to have enough information um, to pass along? And then also, how do you navigate knowing, um, you know, what things that you really know well enough in order to do that? So that's a great question. I was just getting ready to add to what you were saying before you posed those questions, because I was going to say, like, all, having a good heart to want to help is one thing. But like you say, if you don't have the, back, the background, the expertise or whatever, and you still trying to help <laughs> without acknowledging that you have a deficit in an area, it can also be that it can end up being detrimental to that person. It's kind of like you pushing a car that's in park the entire time and you stressing and straining and, and, and passing out and, and you know whatever versus you know you knowing someone so I think the biggest thing for me um was I opened up books man I opened up books and by me reading more I began to have a more of expansive uh, uh knowledge base to kind of like have things to pull from and and even if I'm not 100% certain of like how to help in this specific moment when it comes to someone who is pushing their own car and me wanting to kind of glean in then I know now to, I know that I know nothing. I know that I know nothing. I want to say it again because, you know, if I don't know it, then I definitely have a, gr a great group of friends in my circle that do, or I've been listening to this great guy on his podcast, this motivational speaker who may know it, or because of everything, of my experiences in education or whatever, the people I've come across, I have connections and networks with people who may be experts in that thing. Like I wouldn't have someone come to me, talk about financial, uh, uh, financial literacy and, and assessments and, 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 and investments because that's not my piece, but I know people who are that I can direct them to, you know, I, I may not be able to tell you how to, you know, uh, 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 find the cheapest trip to go across the world and have a good time with your family, but I know someone else who may be. So I think understand, being okay with not knowing helps you to then be more resourceful and, and go into your memory bank and realize, okay, well, if I don't know who, I can say that I don't know one, and then two, let me see if I can point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to, I don't want to misguide you. And then another thing that I found is helpful in helping people is that you don't always, how can I say this? In working alongside someone to, to actualize whatever dream or goal they have, it should be more of them talking and less of you talking. Mm -hmm. You should be listening, letting them process and probe their thoughts out loud and kind of guiding their thoughts, but you shouldn't be like, why your car not working? Well, your car not working because the carburetor here and da da da. Like, because you're telling them something, and if I like, so in 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 a car sense, it's not, it doesn't matter. But if I'm talking about someone's marriage, and I tell them that you know you should do this because of that, and then they do it, and then they end up getting divorced. Now I'm responsible for telling them that thing. So when you come to helping people, it's also really really good to be a great listener and letting them process and probe and help them guide their own thoughts so they can come with their own solution. You are not Mr. Fix it, Mr. Solve it. You're the person that is kind of being a listening board and helping them navigate their thought or telling them to go back to the drawing board or telling them or getting them connected with someone else. So be very, very careful with like how we help people because if it don't go right, you best believe it and come back to you blaming you for what you did and what you told me to do. 
facts, definitely. Uh, man, you, you you hit some you hit some powerful notes right there. Uh, I uh, I was just thinking, man, um, because you you gave you just gave us a lot to unpack just now. So uh, there's a, a few things I actually want to uh, want to jump into. Number one, before before we move forward, let's just do a quick reference drop, right? Um, we talk about those books. We talk about those. Um, those those podcasts, those videos, uh, those people who you know we know between the two of us, we, we share a lot of resources and things like that all the time. Um, what are some great resources, or you know, just in terms of books or anything that people that you would that you listen to um, that you would refer to other people? Man, um, <laughs> how long we got on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone missed. Well, so for me, man, like I said, it all it, it started with like the Les Browns, the 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 uh, Zen, the Zig Ziglers, the the you know Dale uh, Nightingales, and 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 like and then it went to E. T. and 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 Dave Ramsey and 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 Gary Vaynerchuk, like listening to the different books, Tony Robbins, um, just a ton of people, man. Like because like I realized, like I think it was Les Brown who used to say it, like no, it might have been Zig Ziglar. Um, he was saying like how it's like mobile university, right? Like how we're always in a car. Like it used to be hard to get this information from these well-known speakers, motivational people, these experts in their particular crowd. It used to be hard. Like you couldn't get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but now we have it at our fingertips, YouTube and and podcasts and and books and audible. Even if you can't read, you can listen to it. Like you literally have the access to all of these great people who have changed the world when it comes to thinking and service and sales and this and the third. So I just started realizing I don't know nothing. So I just started soaking in everything and learning. You know, when I was going through my financial thing, I had to move from Maryland to Texas and I knew I had to save X amount of dollars and knock out some debt at the same time and do this. Um, Tony Money Makeover, Dave Ramsey, started reading his book, listen to him, listen to his podcast. Learn about 520, 529 plans for, you know, all these things that people don't even know that even exist. And so in being a sponge and being humble and knowing that I know nothing, I was able to acquire a lot of information from these people who have been there, done that, and have lived it. You know what I'm saying? And so um, definitely reached out to a lot of those people, man. I've just been listening to their podcasts, reading their books, listening to their audibles, and just looking and watching their YouTube videos. And hopefully those same things can be held true for when people who watch our podcast and listen to our podcast and, and take those gems as they're riding their cars and, and navigating through their lives. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Facts. I, I want to, you know, just drop, just drop a few gems in there too, man. Um, you know, one of our favorite books between the two of us is the alchemist. Yes. I mean, I, I just can't, I can't, I can't say how, you know, <laughs> I just can't say enough how powerful that book is. Um, you know, and then uh, another one, uh, relatively um, aligned to that is uh, the monk who sold his Ferrari. Ooh, yes, you know, fire. fire. That um, one book financially that I think really kickstarted, you know, my mindset um, is definitely the richest man in Babylon. Yes, um, as a man thinketh, and I, yep. I, I do actually have to 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 uh, you know provide a little bit of context in terms of um, my particular list of um of readings what i noticed one time uh, i was you know i was on facebook and uh, somebody i know had, had shared a post um it was actually a, a female that i know i went to college mm -hmm. a black woman and um she said oh share some books you know what are you, what what are you what are your top go-to's uh, for reading and what i did notice though and I, I had to check myself too was that the list that i had provided her was heavily male centered um you know what i mean and i'm glad I, you said that you know i had to take a step back and and, and look at it and say hmm I, yes i'm a man i get it right <laughs> of course i'm gonna you know lend to these things um you know as a man thinketh and you know all that, mm -hmm. that you know that type of idea but i also needed to um be mindful and and understand that i have biases in, in what I'm doing, right? And what I'm, the way I'm thinking. And as, you know, I project myself, you know, I don't want to only appeal to, you know, just, you know, one Men, group or of one side of thinking. Or, yeah, exactly. Like you have to be open-minded. And I was like, you know, that's crazy. So, you know, just in thinking about that, uh, just to throw another book in there, 
um, because many of us have read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, right? But did you know that there was The Art of War for Women? And it's dope, right? So I would say grab that too. Um, you know, and then uh, just other people, you know, in culture who have ever influenced me. Um, I'm real big on Dame Dash, um, you know, what he's doing with Dash Studios and just, you know, his whole catalog and backing um, is just amazing in terms of business and, you know, being a family man, all those things. Um, yep. And then of course, looking at somebody like the, the late, great Nipsey Hussle, um, you know, and for, for me, a lot of what I started reading and, and took from actually came from his, you know, his book list that was released. Um, yeah. So just thinking about all those things and um, yeah, I mean, you know, talking about how do you market things um, and, and put information out. Um, and I'm, you know, if you, I forget the name, I can't think of the name of the book right now. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's escaping me right now, but the hundred dollar cheese steak <laughs> idea. Um, it's just, you know, amazing, amazing material that's, that's out there, like you said, but you know, to that point is, it's the idea of, you know, and, and E.T. that has his, you know, the most famous clip, um, that mm -hmm. he's probably is, uh, the guru story. The right? guru. Yep. Mm -hmm. Talking about seeking the guru, like. Who do you want to not necessarily be like, but who is doing what you would like to do or who is excelling in the area, you know, that, that you are working in and yep. not only just saying like, I want what this person has, but I want the information, right? I want, the, I want the knowledge. I want the facts, um, you know, and, and also just thinking about, you know, the idea of like a, a school who sat by the door where once you get the information, what do you do with it, right? Like what you were saying with providing it now, you know, pass it off to your sister. Like I have a sister that's in college right now about to graduate um, and, and it's the same same thing, right? Same story, but you know, it's all about giving back and, and not just harboring, you know, those things for yourself. But the, the I think the initial piece of it, um, as we talk about these resources and different, um, you know, um, influences is inquiry. You have to be open to asking questions, right? <laughs> Humbly, man, and that, and that comes and that comes with humility, man. And mm -hmm. and you know, you brought up something that really and the whole being open and being well rounded. Um, I have to shout out Brene Brown. Brene Brown is another great author um, in the mental health field. Daring greatly, daring to lead. All her books are really, really great. Um, it talks about that being courageous, being vulnerable, being naming things, not being afraid to name things. Um, you know, you think about the Kobe Bryant, the late, great Kobe Bryant. Like, I love his work ethic, his energy. And sometimes, man, you can learn from people, not know them, never meet them, and, and they still impact you in a certain way. Um, this is other author named Ken Coleman who wrote this book called The Proximity Principle. And it pretty much is touching on everything you're saying. Like, you know, get around people who are doing those things you want to do. And a lot of times we think as people that we have to search for the Kobe Bryant in, in our neighborhood. But we don't realize, or, or, or we had to go all the way to LA to get that that, 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 that information from him. When that's when when all this all the while, people are already in your circle or in your community that are doing things on a level that can get you started, right? And in the book, it talks about that. Like you have to have people who are look first within your community. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, use YouTube, use all those things, but you also, like you say, you want someone tangible that you can actually speak with and engage and interact with so find people in your community who are doing things you want to do if you want to get into clothing and design and fashion then find someone who's local who's making it happen right now if you want to find someone who's doing things financially well and got financial literacy down pat find someone who's locally doing it right now and then you'll become that 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 learner who's seeking that knowledge to then become the used utilize what you learn to then change your lives and the lives of others because once you become once you seek from the guru and get that information then in some in some way, shape, or form, then you kind of become a guru in your in your own right. After you have put in the work and you've and you've actually shown that you can bring it to life as well. So, you know, take it seriously because what you learn could then ultimately impact the lives of many. Right. So, here's a, here's a here's a thought though. Here's a question rather, um, because oftentimes it's, you know when when we you know seek the guru per se, right? Um, what I hear you talking a lot about is networking right that's that's basically what we're talking about building relationships um with with other people you know um and and learning from them sharing experiences information um but how do you ensure that in the idea of networking that you are doing it in a way that is not just taking mm. you know I mean? like because they're there some people might get the wrong 
connotation of what yeah. we're, we're saying here because yeah. it's like, oh, you know, well, I'm I'm going to reach out to this person because I know they they you know they're winning, right? They're on they're on top, and they can show me how to do it. Um, yep. But in many cases, you know, how do we go about doing that without just being like, give me, give me, give me, give me, right? What I guess if I don't have anything in in that world to offer you, then how how can I network that way? Well, I'll, I'll say this. You, you hit on the head. Oftentimes, there's not much, or if anything, you can offer someone who is a guru. Because they are, they have already have what they need. You can't, you can't give them, they don't need your monies. They don't need your, you know, your you're blowing smoke up their behind. They don't need any of that because they've already achieved it, right? I think one of the biggest things that, um, that really helps with breaking that barrier of, of, of seeking a guru and having them you know, want to help you and, and have it not feel like they've been, they're being taken advantage of or whatever is, what you do with what 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 they what they give you, I think show, like the appreciation. Like I think because ultimately, and I said it's not everybody, because there are some people who who they see that you need something from them, and they wanna they wanna take advantage of that, and they will, you know, what I'm saying find ways to do that. And then there's other people who want to freely give, and they are waiting to give it, but they're not going to just give it to anyone who's not already starting to embody it. It's kind of like the 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 Mr. Miyagi, like you know, Daniel's son, he wanted to become this karate kid, but he had to do these little things along the way to become that. And he had to learn discipline. He had to learn those things. And it was tough at first because he wasn't always embodying or 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 bringing those things that he was being taught to life, which is then what caused a, you know a small ripple in their relationship. But then once he realized that Mr. Miyagi just wanted the best women, wanted him to understand the principles and become disciplined, things worked out in his favor. So I think when it comes to seeking a guru or someone who has what you want in life, they're not looking for money, they're not looking for anything. They want to see your work ethic. They want to see that you actually are going, you're not wasting their time because the biggest dollar, the biggest asset in this world is time. So if they're going to sit down and stop what they're doing <laughs> when they don't have to, and they already are doing well in their lives, to help someone who's seeking that information, you best believe they're looking for their return of investment by what you bring forth. We can't be having the same conversation a month, two months, six months, a year from now, talking about the same thing, and you're still on step one, you're wasting my time. But if I see that you're actually grappling with what we're learning, you're trying to apply it, and yes, you may make some hiccups like Danielson did, but eventually you're going to overcome that obstacle, and then you're going to be able to look back a year from now and realize that I am no longer the person that I was 12 months ago. And that gratitude, that appreciation, and also showing gratitude, that's another big thing, like work ethic and, being, and showing gratitude. I'm huge on that. I mean, there was times where I would just like write letters, like thank you letters to people and just drop it off. Like, I, you know, either in their mailbox or, or, or I would like go to work and just leave them on their desk. Like gratitude is huge, man. Like people want to know that what you're doing means something to them and that you're grateful for it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's two things. You got to be grateful and show gratitude for them taking the time to work alongside you. And you have to back it up with movement, with action. And, and bringing those things to life because those two things is what's going to pay the bill of the time that you're spending with the guru. Right. Definitely. I mean, that was a bar that you just dropped in terms of, um, you know, time being the greatest asset. You know, it's, it's so crazy to think, you know, about all the instances where, you know, they always talk about, you know, when people have so much money, right? But they're they're unhappy, or you know, you know, whatever the case may be, um, in terms of things, right? Um, but there's there's something to truly be said for you know how we use our time, um, you know, and how we offer it, you know, to others. Because you know, thinking about you know what you can provide to somebody who who just like actually doesn't need you, right? Um, you know, the the essence of, of of time for them and for you. You know what I mean? Is is definitely something that you should really pay attention to because, you know, like you were saying, if we're still having the same conversations, right? If I'm still finding you on the side of the road, pushing your car <laughs> every month or every, you know what I mean, repeatedly, then it's at some point, I'm not going to want to pull over and get out. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just you know, and I'm 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 speaking from my you know from from myself because I can only say you know um, for me, but I just know that in that that context is kind of like you know um the the definition of insanity right yes <laughs> doing the same thing over and over and expecting it's a different outcome. outcome it's never going to happen right it's, it's just not going to change like unless you become a catalyst for change in your own situation right or 
you find a way, you know, to to induce some type of change or shift, um, then nothing's going to be, you know, not, everything's, everything's going to be the same. And yeah. what happens, I think, a lot of times um, with that is, you know, we, we fall into a lot of, you know, kind of the same system, same cycle um, that we've seen. But, you know, it's, it's difficult to, I think, to step outside of that, um, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of times it takes a chance, right? Like you, you kind of go out on a whim, um, you know, to, to see if something's going to happen, right? You, you essentially have to have to do something different if you want something different, right? So uh, I, I guess just speak to, um, if, you, if you can, like you're, it, I guess maybe even a specific time or experience where you recognize this, right? And, and you had to step outside of insanity. <laughs> um, so, oh, you talking about me being on the receiving end, or me being the the person that's seeing the person pushing the car? Like, which 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 point, which vantage point you want me to come from? Let's do an example of both. Huh? Let's let's do it. Let's do an, one example of each. All right. So, um, <laughs> got it. One on where I was the person that was pushing the car. Mm. Um. And I realized that I was still in the same position and it was like something had to change was when, um, okay, I'll go back to college. You know what I'm saying? So I was a party animal. I was a person who, you know, like if, if, if it ain't, if I ain't turned up, then it ain't fun. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, I had to learn the hard way, man. I, I you know, I realized I look back on my life and from my senior year of high school until I became a teacher in DC, I read this book by T.D. Jakes called He Motions, uh, which was a great read. And it told me to look at my finance. It had this exercise in the book where it talked about like looking at your front, your bank account and what you see frequently pop up is kind of like where your priorities are in your life. And at the time, of course, you know, my daughter, you know, what, 2014, 15. So she was like three or four years old. Um, but when I was looking at my bank account, it was K Jewelers. It was it was always going to the bars and drinking and buying bottles and doing this and and as I looked back and thought about all those things, I had the DUI, I had got reckless driving, I you know had gotten to plenty issues with relationships and stuff because of the choices that I was making in my life, and I was like, yo, what am I doing? And also I was and and, and I think I realized that I was. I was running away from something, um, but in running away from it, I became, I was slowly becoming that person. So I'll be more specific. I, I told you, I didn't grow up with my father in my life. And so I told myself I wouldn't be like my father. You know, I, I wanted to be a great husband. I wanted to be a great man and have a family man, but I was doing the things like drinking and I was having, a, I had a child, you know, and out of wedlock and then <laughs> down the road, DUI, down the road, ended up having another child, but then she had a miscarriage. Uh, but another woman, you know what I'm saying? And and like just living crazy. And I was like, I'm literally becoming the person that I said I did not want to become. This is insanity. But I think subconsciously I was I was just ignoring it and avoiding it, but not realizing that I was drawing myself closer and closer to it. Um, so I had to break that cycle and change my whole thought about where I wanted to go in my life. And I had to forgive my father. I think that was the biggest thing that I had to do. I had to realize that I had to forgive him and realize that there's no book written on how to be a great father and that generationally, there's reasons why me and his interaction was how it was because his father wasn't in his life and things like that. And so I had to take the blame off of that and forgive him and love him. And ever since then, we are like this, we're tight, we're thick as thieves and we have such a great relationship. He's my like a big cheerleader in my life for everything that I do. You'll see him elbow poppy sudden on Facebook, posting this, posting that, posting this, posting that. Right, He's so it. proud of me, you know what I'm saying? And so, and, and ever since then, I just lived differently. So that was one situation where I felt like I would have to break this cycle of insanity where I was just like drinking, living wild, trying to run away from things that I, like, I subconsciously didn't know I was dealing with. And then it was ultimately taking my road, my life down the road that I didn't want to go down. On the flip side of that, um, being on the other side of like wanting to help someone who is pushing their car, um, I realized like, so like I said, I go back to what I know. Helping people was a big part of who I was. Mm -hmm. And I carried the burdens of helping people my entire life more specifically like my mom um like you know my brother and all and, and, and like them specifically like and I and I really feel like I was like 
losing sleep over wanting them to, to achieve their goals or be successful or get out of their own situations because um, that's what they kept saying. You know, like my mom would be like, she, you know, there's no jobs in Virginia, Virginia, you know, got to get out of Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. And I remember one time where we sat down and I literally like spent like hours, like hours, bro, like sitting down, like talking through her financial situation, having her like think about like what kind of job she could find in other states. And then like talking through her exit strategy at her current job and like, you know, planning what to do with Yana because she was still in high school and, you know, how to how to get that thing to work out and, and you know, how I can help in and lean in, do this, do that. And like we talked it all the way through. Now, now, mind you, prior to that, there has also been conversations years and years and years before that. But this was one of those more like in-depth conversations that we had where like she was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to do this. By this month, I'm going to do this. By that month, I'm going to do this. And here we are like two years from that conversation. And like my mom is still where she is. And she's, I mean, you know what I'm saying? She doesn't want to leave. She, she wants to leave Virginia, but she still hasn't left Virginia, right. you know? Um, and I realized that it's either, it's like, it's fear, one. You know, fear often stifles people and keeps them where they are um, and, and has them not thinking outside, even thinking that it's possible to do anything different, which is another episode that I would love to talk about one day, a topic. Um, but I had to realize that I had to stop it. Like, I had to stop trying to fix it because it was causing anxiety and it was causing tension between us. Because every time she would say something about Virginia being this, Virginia being that, I was like, thinking to myself, like, well, if it sucks so bad, then why are you still there? Like, but and I was like, you know what? Nope, nope. Break the cycle, insanity. Nope, not gonna do it. So now that we talk, we talk about everything else. We talk about life, and and we leave it at that. You know, like and if anything comes up that is a revolving around that topic, you know, I don't give energy to it because I realize that I have to respect where people are mm -hmm. and be okay with them living their life the way they want to live their lives. And I can't be Mister Fix It. And although I love my mom, my, my mother dearly, I just won't go there with that conversation anymore. Um, and that's and that's kind of like a, a pattern with me in a lot of relationships in my life, whether it's family or friends. I've learned that I just got to be okay with either where they are in their lives and not try to change them or fix them or do anything, or whatever. Or if I feel like I can't do that, then there are some times where some some relationships have been broken, and I had to move on because it was just not helpful for me. Um, so there it's tough times, but those are like two instances where I was pushing and had to stop, and also I was the one that was driving past and realized that maybe this is just not the right time for them and i have to be okay with that facts definitely just thinking about you know the, the this whole analogy that we've been you know circling around um you know with this entire episode is you know pushing the car it's like you know you can only do so many times where you are the only one pushing somebody else's car and then you <laughs> have to realize like wait a minute like so you're just not gonna help me. You just <laughs> like this. This is not even my problem. But <laughs> you know what I mean. But it's it's you know at, at a certain point you know I think for many people who you know have a really good heart like you, right? Uh, there this this is kind of you know what happens um, you know on a regular basis. Like I say, it's a consistent thing for for yeah. people who give, right? You give you know you know unselfishly um, all the time and it gets to a point where I guess people, some people might expect it, right? It's just, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I know, I know Jamonte is going, going to look out. I already know. So in that, you know, you either have, you know, folks who are set in their ways, like my father's the same way um, in terms of, you know, in Pittsburgh and, um, and just in, you know, in life in his own situation. And, you know, he said something uh, pretty uh, telling to me, um, you know, he didn't say it to me, it was actually to my grandmother, but he was like, and I think this was like actually in a, in a joking context a little bit too. It was like, you, you can't re-raise me. And I was like, mm. okay, like that, you know, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, in be it age or experience or whatever the case may be, as you were saying, when, when people reach a certain point, I guess, in their own development, right, in whatever context you want to put it, um, they are who they are. Yeah. You can try as hard as you want to, to, to make the improvement or to, to be a, a, a change agent for them or whatever. Um, but if it's not, if it's not in their mindset, and it's, it's not in their heart, it's, it's not going to take place. And what you're going to end up doing is, you know, pushing and throwing your back out. <laughs> yep. And that was, that's what I was getting ready to say, like to that point, man, like once you do that too many times and you get caught up in that cycle, 
it can start bleeding into your own life. You know what I'm saying? Like the energy that you're expending and, and the frustrations and the stress and all those things that come with that, even, and, and, and it can be even financially. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're helping someone, helping someone and they's like still stuck in that way, in one way you're enabling, but in two is like, it then kind of bleeds into your home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's why like, you know, I, I went back to those four things. Like, you know, I'm a husband, I'm a father, this and then third, because I had my priorities all out of whack. You know, there was a time where I had my godson who, you know, God bless his, God bless his soul. I was trying to help him tirelessly. But in doing so, I started putting him before my wife, before my daughter, before this, before that. I was going to have him move in with me. And then my wife is in Ohio and I'm here in Maryland. And then, but my daughter not here with me. I'm spending more time with him than I am with my daughter and my wife and this and that. And, that. and although I had good intentions, I realized that like I had, went from helping push the car to I'm I'm the car and I'm pushing the car and it's my car too but like now my house is I now somebody I need somebody to help me because you know I've I've overextended and I I've, I've overreached and so one thing in helping people you have to make sure that you're able to do so in a way that one you may not even be looking for anything in return and two that it it does not have any negative impact on your home mm. on your home that's important man cuz <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Right. And I was just about to um, ask you in terms of, cause, because sadly what, what, what this sounds like, right, in terms of being like an extremely helpful person and open hearted, you know, and just kind, it, it almost sounds like a sickness. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and to the point where um, there, 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 you know, you get symptoms of the, of you know too much right yep. um and i and i hear you say one of them you know is is you know one of those symptoms is looking at looking at your own life and your own home situation and basically um you know just looking at it and and analyzing if there is a detriment right if there are negative effects that are coming from you just wanting to help um mm -hmm. I guess, would you, are there any other symptoms, I guess, to this quote unquote disease, if you want to put it like that, um, to where you should think about, you know, and this is, I just want to share this with the people who mm -hmm. might be in this situation, right? They're out yeah. there, you know, they're constantly giving, 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 and they might be doing so, you know, just wholeheartedly and, and not expecting anything in return. But at the end of the day, you know, when you get to a certain point, it's too much. Yeah. Talk to the people about what those symptoms are. That it might be, it might even be like actual physical things, or you know, mental. Can you, uh, I guess, provide a little bit more insight? Yeah, man. Um, I think when you get into the habit of doing it, like anything else, right? Too much of anything is a bad thing. And I think you kind of get into that, like that savior mentality. Like, mm -hmm. like you are the you are the Mister Fix It or Mrs. Fix It for everybody, and that like you find like you have now enmeshed your identity with being this person who is always giving, always helping. Um, and like you feel empty or, or, or not have, like feel like your life has not been fulfilled if you're not constantly helping someone, if you're not constantly giving someone, if you're not constantly doing another thing. And, and you know, you should never get caught up to the point where that's all you feel like you have to give. Um, because like I said, then, then when you aren't able to give or when someone doesn't want to receive your giving, now you, you're looking at yourself like something's wrong with you. So I think we kind of get, when we get into that pattern of doing it so often, um, it, 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 it then begins to have a negative connotation to where that's all you feel like you're good to do. Mm -hmm. Like forget all what you want to do in life. You all, you live to give and give and give and push everybody's car. Your legs and arms are strong as a mug because all you're doing is push someone else's car, never driving your own. Um, and I think also what comes with that, because we know people are futile, man. People are, you know, <laughs> It's like you change so rapidly, you know what I'm saying? It's volatile, is more so when I'm looking at it, right? So like, also when you continuously give like that, and then people don't either reciprocate or don't um, um, get into action or bring those things, you keep telling them, keep helping them, keep talking to them about, then it's like stress inducing to you. Mm -hmm. And then you feel like they're, they're, they're being stuck in their life is also like you're stuck in your life too. Like mm -hmm. their success is like, you know, your success, but their failures also your your failures too. Like, 
oh, it's my fault. Maybe if I had just helped him one more time, or maybe if I just gave him the extra money, or maybe if I, you know, just listened to him on the phone that last time for that two hours, you know, maybe they would just get there, get there, get there. And then, like, you start beating yourself up about, like, you know, it's my fault. And when it has nothing to do with you, nothing. You know what I'm saying? But because you've, you've kind of taken on that Superman, Superwoman, Savior mentality, you're now one with their success or one with their failure or one with their stuckness. Some people are compl- complacent. Some people are okay with where they are. Mm-hmm. And you're, 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 more un- you're more stressed out about where they are than they are. You know what I'm saying? Like you're up at night thinking about like, oh man, you know, I wish they could be this. I wish they could be here. I wish they could be there. Like, but they sound asleep. Mm. They in their bed, they in their home, knocked out counting Z's and your chest hurt. You gripping your chest. Because there's stress, there's anxiety, there those things that kind of come al- come about. Those you know, like you said, those more um, uh, 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 mental or just like body stressors and things. Like I say we're not meant to be stressed out all the time. So you think about the fact that you have your own stressors in your own life, right? That you have to deal with, and that, and they may be natural things, or there may be some things that are pretty adverse. But then you add on everybody else's stress on top of what you already have going on in your life. Your body can take but so much. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, and then again, kind of going into that savior mentality, once you get into that point where you feel like their success is yours or their failures is yours as well, if, you know, you get into, you get deep enough into it, you start losing your own self-identity and then you think that like life ain't worth living. And then you start having these suicidal ideations, you know, suicidal attempts, you're depressed, you know what I'm saying? And all these things come about. And then on top of all that, like you, maybe you lose in relationships with other people. Maybe your wife leaves you because you know, you keep enabling or keep giving or letting people take advantage of you. And now y- y'all live in your mortgage and, <laughs> and, and, you know what I'm saying? Like all that stuff kind of comes into play or, you know, people moving into your house and, and then something happens, you know, to, you know, with your child or something like you never know. Like there's so many things that could happen when you get caught up in that pattern of, of, of relentlessly giving, 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 giving to where you feel that's all you are. And that's your identity. Um, so stress, anxiety, depression, Savior mentality, loss of relationships, strain on your own relationships and your job, all those things play a role in um in, in, in giving too too much, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, and I, I just want to take this time actually, you know, to to talk to whoever might be on the side on the other side of this listening. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you do find yourself in any of these in the, these categories, in these, you know, in this space, you know, definitely, you know, take the time to reach out. Um, you know, get support if you need it, um, you know, because, you know, all the things that, that you know, Jamonte just mentioned, uh, you know, are, are real things and they are, you know, definite occurrences on a daily basis for a lot of people. Um, you're not by yourself. You're not the only one. You know, we, we've all really been through, you know, honestly, for lack of a better word, trauma. Yeah. Um, and, and these things can induce, you know, a lot of more serious and kind of, you know, a lot of, in many ways, you know, dangerous, um, you know, situations for us. So, you know, if, if, if this is you at all, um, by any stretch, you know, of the word, like, please, you know, reach out um, to someone, you know, call, you know, I know for things like, like suicides, they're definitely, you know, the hotlines and, you know, um, mental health professionals, things like that. Um, but then even, you know, on the flip side of that, like, you know, think about you, like Jamonte for you with, um, you know, your bodybuilding journey. And, and we're talking about the, the, the overload of stress, right? Like, you know, if you put it into, you know, that terminology in the physical, right? You, you're not going to go into the gym, you know, no, even if you're, you're trying to be this great bodybuilder, right? You definitely want to make it happen. But you're not going to go in there and, and just go crazy and overload, you know, the weights and just go ham, you know what I mean? Every single day and try to like kill yourself, right? You know what I mean? Like to to a point. Where, I mean, I'm no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I get. I get. Yeah. What I'm what I'm getting at is knowing knowing that there's a threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Knowing that there's a certain point that you just can't push yourself past. It's like yeah. you can grind as hard as you need to on anything for sure. I definitely condone that. But if you know that this this 500 pounds on the bench is probably not gonna happen, I'm gonna need you to like. Take a step back and just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, think about it for a second. Um, and, you know, and also just think about the fact that maybe today just ain't the day. Like today is not you know, just live, live to fight another day, you know. Yep. And, yep. 
you know, and also in doing that, understand that, you know, you, you are also opening yourself up to, to still be of support to other people, right? You can be yeah. that example, um, you know, and, and people can look at it and say, okay, you know, we all, we got limits. Um, I understand these things. And, you know, there's not a negative connotation that goes along with it. Like, oh, you're, you're weak or you, you know, you can't do this. Like all those things go out the door, you know, um, when, we, when we really get down to what we're, you know, what we're discussing in terms of, you know, seeking and providing support um, yeah. on both sides. And, you know, it's interesting when uh, I was listening to you talk earlier, you know, we, we often go from like opposite ends of the spectrum, right? In terms of like helping people, right? I heard you give examples of helping your sister who is young, right? And then also helping your parents, right? Helping your mom. And, and, and just think about the, the, the difference in age um, and how those things don't necessarily even play that much of a factor, you know, because, you know, there's, there's support and there's something for everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. And it, it, it all just kind of, you know, it's an interesting whip around, um, you know, in terms of what you're looking at and discussion, because it's like, for me too, like I talk about my dad and I talk about my sister. It's like, you know, the, the, the difference there um, of what's needed and also what, what's going to be accepted, right? And what, what's going to be perceived, like your sister is going to, she's going to take that book, right? She's going to, she's going to hear what you say in, in terms of those things, because she looks at you and says, okay, you, you have this experience, right? Um, mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, with, you know, our elders, it's like, yeah. we just got to be respectful. Um, and it's like, all right, well, I can tell you what I know, even though I'm younger than you, or even, uh, you know, your life experiences are different, but, um, you know, it, we have to be mindful of that as well, as, as you were kind of saying. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I say all that to, to, you know, basically get to a point where, you know, in terms of this, this idea, um, the analogy of pushing this car, man, just, you know, number one, you know, be proactive enough to be willing to push your own car. Um, and, you know, when people do come and approach you and try to offer some type of support, um, do your best really to gauge it. And, you know, if it's, if it's genuine and, and where people are coming from, um, and a lot of that is, you know, as we, we talked about before, is going to be based, I think, a lot in um, the history of the, of the relationship. Uh, and, you know, if, that, if it's a person who's always been there when you didn't even have a car, then boom, you know. Um, and then also consider, you know, what can you do um, in return as well, you know. And even if it's a small thing like send a, a thank you card or a note, you know, um, just for, for being able to, um, you know, receive those supports and, and get, you know, help, you know, from anybody else. And, you know, just think about what you can do, right? Yep. Um, and then also, you know, stay away from the uh, the idea of insanity. And, yeah. and if you realize that your car is a lemon, you need to try to figure out what you can do <laughs> to, uh, you know, get another one or, you know, just, you know, how you can, you know, build something else, um, you know, in, in, a, in a more, I guess, productive um, factor, fact, um, more, more productive fashion. Uh, and Jamonte, I don't know if you want to add, you know, anything, you know, to the, to the people uh, before we go ahead and close this out. Um, honestly, man, like people who are pushing just keep pushing. But for those who, who see some, who see someone pushing, mm -hmm. um, you know, understand your limit of, as well as to what you can provide. Um, so that you don't, like I said, tap into interfering with things that you have going on in your home, in your life, financially, mentally, emotionally, all those things. Um, because then you're, you're both going to be, you know, losing that battle of pushing that card because it's going to seep into other things. So definitely make sure that you're able to help um, in a way that doesn't compromise your livelihood and, and your family, but also um, that also feels authentic and genuine. Like, just want to help people. Like, a lot of times we help people, and like you said, we got to gauge it, but we want to help people, and we're looking for something in return. Like, sometimes you just need to do it just because, and then just pull off and be like, dang, I feel good. I'm grateful that I was able to help. I think that's another thing that we miss out on. Like, feel good about the effort, not about what can what can come from the effort. Um, and, then, and then lastly, be okay with not being able to help someone, man. Like, don't don't try to do something that you can't do um, because like I said, it has, it has very, very negative ramifications um, down the road. Um, 
you know, because ultimately you're helping someone with their life. And if you're not confident and certain and, and have the expertise or what have you or the work with all to help them, be okay with saying I can't, but I know someone who can, um, you know, because it's okay. It's absolutely okay. And you get the last thing is you can't help and please everybody. You just can't do it. Um, you have to be completely okay with yourself to understand that and understand that when you are real with yourself in that way, some people make mistakes, some people may go, but you have to be real with yourself in some cases. So those are my last few talking pieces that I got, dog. Like, I think this was another great episode. Right. Um, can't wait to see and what to hear from everybody. And the last thing I would say, like, I want to hear people's comments, man. Like, Definitely. drop some comments, man. Like, tell us what you think about these podcasts. Any questions that come up to mind, any concerns that you may have, ways that we can get better. I'm um, all about growth. I, I, I'm comfortable in knowing that I know nothing. So, you know, we're looking for always having feedback, man, any and every time. Facts, definitely, for sure, man. Um, yeah, <clears throat> just to, to mirror my brother's sentiments, you know, you know, let us know. Uh, feedback is, you know, definitely uh, the best way um, in many contexts, or, you know, scenarios to, to get better. So please um, provide that. Uh, and, you know, I want to leave it at that, man. I don't want to, I don't want to paint this anymore. Like you definitely um, dropped, uh, you know, a, a wonderful summary um, on this for us. So, Jamonte, as always, bro, I love you. I appreciate you being here and, you know, going on this journey with me and definitely going to be watching out um, and monitoring your journey, you know, going through uh, bodybuilding and, you know, creating your own brand. Um, we definitely want to support. So make sure that we can, uh, you know, know where to find uh, your information, your products, um, and follow you. Um, and I'll make sure that we have our, you know, our links on here, our social media, things like that. Um, but with that being said, we just want to say thank you to all the listeners. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you for being at the, the Facts Podcast. That is faith, action, culture, and culture truth, and solidarity. And, solidarity. Um, and that's facts. And that's facts. So peace and love, and we will catch you next time. Love you too, bro. See y'all, man. Peace. Yeah. Just continue to push forward. Continue to know that you have purpose and continue to fulfill your dreams and your passions and everything else will fall into place.